Hi, I'm Dr. Messina, and today a patient came in and asked, how come it's so difficult to remove green ink? And why did the first place I go to to have my tattoo removed never tell me that that yeah glazer that they were using was really never going to get off my green colored tattoo? Hi, I'm Dr. Messina. And today, Vanessa asked me that question. So Vanessa, this video is for you. When we're talking about tattoo removal, the whole thing works by pairing off the wavelength of light that that colored ink absorbs to the wavelength of light that's being shot out of your laser. There are really four popular lasers in use today. The Q-switched or the picosecond YAG, 1064 nanometers, the KTP, 532 nanometers, the Alexandrite laser, 755 nanometers, and the Ruby laser, 694 nanometers. And each of them really targets a specific ink. The 1064 is great for blacks, maybe a navy blue. The 532 is basically for reds, and maybe some yellows. The 755 targets green, and the Ruby laser at 694 does green and blue. So now let's look at that green ink. The green ink absorbs a wavelength between 650 and 800 nanometers. That means we have two lasers that fall right into that wavelength. The 755 Alexandrite laser and the 694 Ruby laser. Now, they both will target green ink. The 755 might have a slight advantage over it. The 694 will do an excellent job. So where does the problem lie? The problem lies in that most people don't have those lasers. In particularly, a Q-switched Alexandrite at 755 tends to be very unstable. I had one and it broke more often than it worked because when you made that wavelength go that fast, either a Q-switch rate or a picosecond rate, it became unstable and a lot of times the rods would fracture. So Ruby laser is a bit more reliable when it comes to removing that green color. But then how many people have a Ruby laser? That's where the problem lies. Most of the places have a 1064, the Q-switch YAG laser, and the Q-Switch 532. So they could get black and red out just great. In this field, I have found a lot of corrupt individuals. I'm sorry to say that. So there are gonna be practices out there who just aren't gonna tell you and take your money and laser you. However, given the benefit of the doubt, I've yet to find a laser company that has in its little brochure, by the way, our laser only does these colors. I've yet to find one that didn't say, this laser is the best thing you could have bought, it's gonna target every color. So it could very well be that those people that lasered my patient multiple times with that 1064 YAG didn't really understand the physics behind tattoo removal. And they were told that the machine is gonna do it. And maybe a YAG laser would remove green ink, <laughs> but it might take 30 years, so it's not practical. So that's why it's not so much the green ink is so elusive, it's that you need to have the proper laser to take it off, and those lasers are not that common. Now there are two more lasers out there. So if you go to a place and they have these two, I would be a little careful. They're oddball wavelengths, the 585 wavelength and the 650 wavelength. They will target blues and greens, Here's the problem. Remember I said that that Alexandrite laser became unstable. Well, the problem with these two wavelengths is it's very difficult to work up enough laser energy that you could actually take the tattoo off. A lot of times when I have patients come to my office from other practices, they have a ghost of the tattoo. And what really happened is the laser that was being used just didn't have enough energy to really shatter the ink once there was hardly any ink left. And that's what could happen with these 585s and 650s. 
So I would stick with those standard four wavelengths, the 1064 YAG, the 532 KTP, the 755 Alexandrite, and the 694 Ruby. So I hope you understand why it seems like green ink is so hard to get out. It's a fact that you need a very specific laser to do so. So that's it. Have a good day. I hope you learned something here. If you do like my videos, remember, click subscribe, hit the bell, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you at the next video.